I'm Pastor Philip Kennedy at First Free Will Baptist Church of Benton, Illinois. And I wanted to bring you another message from the Word tonight. We've been talking about the life of Peter. And in, there's so much that we could talk about that in this series, I'm not going to be able to talk about every single event in the life of Peter. Although it certainly would be an interesting study. But for tonight, I wanted us to look at one of the most amazing events that happened in the life of Peter. And, and to me, it's one of the most amazing events. And it's found in Matthew 14, verses 22 through 32. It says in Matthew 14, verses 22 through 32, And straightway Jesus constrained his disciples to get into a ship and go before him unto the other side, while he sent the multitudes away. And when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up into a mountain apart to pray. And when the evening was come, he was there alone. But the ship was now in the midst of the sea, tossed with waves, for the wind was contrary. And in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them, walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It's a spirit! And they cried out for fear. But straightway Jesus spake unto them, saying, Be of good cheer, it is I, be not afraid. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me come unto thee on the water. And he said, Come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid and began to sink. He cried, saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him and said unto him, O thou of little faith, wherefore didst thou doubt? And when they were come into the ship, the wind ceased, and they were in the ship, uh, and they that were in the ship came and worshipped him, saying, Of a truth, thou art the Son of God. It's, it's found here in this scripture, to me, one of the most amazing stories in, in all of the Bible. Walking on water. You know, it's probably one of my favorite stories in the life of Peter, yes. But walking on water is simply amazing. And we always hear about Jesus walking on the water because he's the, he is the only one able to do such a thing. He's the only one that has the power to do such a thing. Walking on the water is an impossibility, humanly speaking. But as we know, nothing is impossible with our God. And certainly, nothing is impossible for Jesus. In this account, Jesus had sent his disciples on ahead of him uh, on, on, in a boat on the sea while he went off to pray. During the night, the wind began to blow and the waves began to rage and the boat was struggling. Jesus decided to go to them, but, but not like a normal person would. He didn't hop in a boat and decide to try to catch up with them, but instead, Jesus walked on the water to them. Because he's the mighty Son of God, he decided to walk on the water to them. Now when the disciples saw this, they were terrified. As you can imagine, if you were out on a boat in the middle of nowhere and you saw something coming to you on the water, you might be afraid too. I certainly would be afraid. They thought that they were seeing a, a spirit or, or a ghost or something, and that absolutely would be terrifying. As they began uh, to, to panic, Jesus calls out to them and he says, Be of good cheer, it is I. Be not afraid. 
how comforting it is to hear those words from Jesus. To know that this wasn't danger coming at you. This wasn't a ghost coming at you. This wasn't something like that. This was Jesus. And we know that in the presence of Jesus, we have no need to fear. Because Jesus is absolutely in control. But then Peter speaks up. What does he say? Look at verse 28. And Peter answered and said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me come unto thee on the water. Now let me say this. Can you imagine even saying such a thing? I definitely wouldn't have ever said, hey, let me walk on the water to you. I doubt that would have ever entered my mind. But here, Peter was displaying great faith. Amazing faith. Believing that Jesus could allow him to walk on the water also. Peter was believing that Jesus could do anything. Jesus invites him to come. He says, come. And, and see what happens here. Peter, Peter does it. Peter climbs out of the boat. Peter decides to come to Jesus. Peter steps out of the boat. Peter actually walks on the water. And he believed in Jesus so much that, that he knew that he could do it. And he steps onto that water and he begins to walk toward Jesus. He believed in Jesus so much that he believed he could. What amazing faith. But then something happens. Peter notices the waves crashing all around him, the wind blowing mightily or boisterous, as the scripture says, and he begins to be a little bit afraid. He begins to sink. I, too, would be a little bit afraid if I began to sink in a storm like that. You see, he took his eyes off of Jesus. He took his eyes off the one that he had faith in to be able to walk on the water. He took his eyes off of Jesus. And when he did that, he began to lose sight. And he let fear come in so that he began to sink. Peter gets kind of talked bad about for this. But how often do we allow worry or fear to slip into our lives? How often have we lost sight of Jesus in our walk with him? How often have we messed up? When this happens, uh, because, because it does happen in the life of every believer... It happens. When this happens, we need to, to do like Peter did. It, it happens, though, and I'll get to that in a moment. When this happens, because it'll happen in our lives, things just don't go right. I guarantee you, when Peter stepped out of that boat, when his eyes fixed on Jesus full of faith, he never expected to get distracted. He never expected to, to be full of fear. He never expected to lose sight of Jesus. I'm sure he didn't mean to take his eyes off Jesus. A, you, uh, a believer usually doesn't mean for that to happen. But it happens and now he's sinking. But look what Peter did when he began to sink. He cried. He said, Lord, save me. He cried a short, desperate, honest prayer. He pled for the Lord to help him. That's how we need to respond when we realize that we've lost sight. 
That's how we need to respond when we realize that we're not doing all that we ought to be doing. That's how we ought to respond when, we, when we've lost sight of Jesus. We need to cry out to Jesus. When we cry out to Jesus, he hears us. Now understand, he doesn't always respond in the exact same way. He doesn't always respond in the exact same way every single time, but he always hears and he always responds. For Peter, he reached out and he grabbed him and he saved him. We need to respond like Peter by calling out to Jesus. Now, I mean every time we have a situation in our life, he doesn't respond the same way in every situation. But let me say this. Any time that we call out to Jesus needing saved from our sins, uh, asking to repent of our sins, asking for forgiveness, and wanting to receive Jesus Christ, he responds the same way every time. And that's by forgiving us of our sins, washing us white as snow, and, and saving us. But notice, then, back to, our, back to this account, then Jesus asked Peter a question in verse 31. And immediately, it says, and immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand, caught him, and said unto him, O thou of little faith, wherefore didst thou doubt? I think that Peter needed to hear these words. I think Peter obviously knew he had messed up. I think Peter obviously knew that when he took his eyes off of Jesus that, and, and he began to sink, he knew he was in trouble. He knew he had messed up. But I think Peter needed to hear these words to reinforce the fact that when Jesus is in control, we have no need to fear. And so Jesus says, why did you doubt? Oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? When Jesus is in control, we have no need to fear. Yes, we mess up. Yes, we, we fail. And, and it's then that we need to call out to Jesus. But I believe Jesus says something similar to us. Why did you doubt? When we lose sight of Jesus, our faith is small. And you know what? We can go from great faith to small faith in a matter of moments, just like Peter. Remember, Peter is the one who stepped out of the boat to begin with. Peter is the one who displayed such great faith to be able to walk on the water to Jesus. Peter is the one that dis displayed that great faith faith. And then when he began to doubt and he began to sink, he called out to Jesus. In this we need to be like Peter. We need to have the faith of Peter to walk on water. The faith in Jesus Christ to know that he can do anything. And that through him we can do anything in his name. We need to have that type of faith in Jesus Christ. That's the type of faith that Peter had. This account ends with them all worshiping Jesus in the boat. As soon as they got in the boat, the, the wind and the waves ceased because Jesus can do anything. And they worshiped him. You know, we can certainly learn a lot from this account in Peter's life. And I would love, you know, to discuss this even further with you and to talk about the scripture with you because that's one of my favorite things to do, to discuss the scripture. Call me, contact me, uh, e email me, contact me through Messenger, comment on this post. And, and I will gladly discuss the scripture with you. But for now, I hope that you have faith in Jesus Christ alone. I hope 
that we can have the faith like Peter. And when we slip, that we'll turn to Jesus just like Peter did and call out to him to help because Jesus will help. May God bless you.